Hey, Jack. Due to the fact that I felt like listening to some Black Sabbath tonight, well, I'm going to go over some... What? You jerk. I came across this... And I think this came up March 5th, you know, 2019. I saved it, of course. And what Randy Rhodes really thought about Black Sabbath... And um, anybody who knew Randy Road or listened to Randy Road or even heard of the man when I heard of him in back in 1980, uh, one Blizzard of Oz album, as my older brother laid the stuff on the table, and I took high interest in it all. Black Sabbath, Ozzy. Doesn't matter what was on the table, I took it and I liked it. Especially when Randy Rhodes came along and it's very sad that Eddie Van Halen is going through some cancer treatments. Um, you know, just to see my metal icons going downhill is... I have been wanting to do some videos, but man, the way my days and life is going, it's just like trying to do tributes to bands and, and people I like and you know it's it's tough to see them and when Randy Rhodes died man I know I was really really crushed back in 19 I remember when that came on the radio I was sitting in the car and um just literally um what was that in 82 I think I was like 9 years old uh, yeah, that's about the time my parents was getting into, you know, separation, and, you know, I'm getting dragged around in cars and stuff, but the radio was always on for me, I always kept that radio on, and when I heard that, I was, oh, breaking news, Randy Rowe, guitarist of Ozzy Osbourne, uh, died in a plane, uh, related crash on a bus no 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 on the uh a plane yeah you know the plane he was trying to wake up Ozzy on the bus and the plane happened to crash and um you know man when I heard that it was like a say so big brother of mine passed away you know I take music very seriously and um man it crushed me and you know, icons like, say, you know, Eddie Money has passed away. Rick Ocasio of the Cars passed away. Them two, too, were huge influences in my life. But, um, Randy Rose, man, going on about <laughs> uh, how recent interview from Canada... Uh, ex Quiet Riots founder bassist best friend Randy Rose Kelly Garney has revealed what Randy really thought about Black Sabbath. So this was before Rudy Sarzo joined the band. Um, he was the second bassist, obviously. If everybody noticed the Metal Health album from Quiet Riot. I don't know why this guy didn't stay in, but after Randy left and went to Ozzy, he must have thought, eh, it's not going to be good. Of course, I will get um, Quav Quavo, uh, shoot, forget his name. But the guitars that took over for Quiet Riot, man, I give that guy lots of props and credit. And he did join Rat for the um, Infestation album. And I swear to God, him and Dean Martini, D Martini, both of them guitars get brought back a lot of 80 type riffs in the Infestation album, man. And he was put in place to fulfill the Quiet Riot, Randy Rhodes position. And I swear to God, that guy did damn well. Like, he's an underrated guitarist, man. And he should be up in the top 10 in my book 
But as this guy would say, Black Sabbath to us, we're trying to be in, we're trying to be evil, Randy Rhodes, and I didn't really get it. That is why it's so weird that Randy Rhodes ended up with Ozzy because Ozzy because we never listened to Black Sabbath. We didn't think they were very talented. <laughs> That coming from a man that took the anvil from the goddamn ground and threw it into the crowd of the audience, Mr. Tony Iommi, and damn right. But something must have clicked in Randy's head to say, hey, this guy, I got to play with him. Then yeah, Randy and I loved Alice Cooper as the bassist goes on. It was a whole different realm of music. This was like going to see a horror movie. Black Sabbath to us was like Church of Evil to us. But if you go and you listen to any Black Sabbath song, and when I was young, I'll tell you something right now. Even I was like, just put all that playing the devil music. Ah! You know, young, dumb, naive. But when I started listening and hearing the lyrics, it's like, wait a minute. They're not talking about worshiping the devil. They're not talking about friggin', you know, bowing or sacrificing. They're talking about war. You know, they're talking about like war pigs. They're talking, about, if you even hear the song, one of my favorite songs um, off the Sabotage album. Ah, uh, damn it. The, um,. Uh, I got a plate in my head. Tell me to leave it all behind. Got it slipping away, slipping in tomorrow. Damn it, I can't. Oh, Magnolia. The song Magnolia. Mega, Mega Magnolia, I believe. And if you listen to them lyrics, and I even told my therapist this, it is a song to me, you listen to them lyrics closely, and it's a song to me of someone beating the odds against schizophrenia. They sing about schizophrenia in the song, they sing about all, and to me, it sounded like the per Ozzy or the band we're trying to make these people that suffer from schizophrenia to beat the odds against it. You gotta listen to the song and listen to the li and lyrics. I do believe they have a, a song on YouTube, or video on YouTube, you can read the lyrics. And I'm thinking, this ain't no devil shit. And of course you got the um, song, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, Oh, N.I.B. Falling in love with the devil. And, all, and you know, what the, what the devil don't fall in love, you're thinking, when you... So, of course, Randy and this old bassist got it all wrong. I mean, Alice Cooper said it in the video. Who is more scary, Ozzy Osbourne or Alice Cooper? I think they were both equal. I think both bands did a great job of doing and characterizing things but also to put the words and the lyrics and the music and Black Sabbath is not evil. They were singing about the evil in the world. If you put it all in perspective and you very well look and search through the lyrics of the albums, you will see that Black Sabbath was only telling you of the nature of the world, just like war pigs, um, children of the grave. I mean, and there's many more. Who are you? I'll tell you right now. Take the song, Who Are You, from the Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath album. Of course, when I saw that cover at first, I was looking at, oh, the devil, you know. When I was a kid, I would talk about the devil, play the mix of the devil, say stupid things. But you know what? I look at it now as that I'd rather beat the devil and smack him around, kick him in his balls and say, get the F up out of my face because you're nothing to me. And the song off of Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, Who Are You? Oh my God, man. 
I, I swear that song was to say so be written for me. The lyrics in it um, remind me of my older brother. You know, here's a guy that I looked up to as a kid. Here's a guy that I looked up to that reminded me, like, say so right, Arthur Fonzarelli from Happy Days. You know, I was looking up my brother this way, but all of a sudden he took a dark, sinister, deep turn into my life, even into my kid's life, and did some nasty things, you know? And the last time I talked to him, and being all said and done of it, the guy goes off and uses my name again to the police. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes, it, it, just the mere fact that I could get arrested one day, have it all cleared up because, yeah, your face is on the license nowadays, but just the agony and the bullshit you got to go through because someone uses your name and you got to get arrested or whatnot to get cleared up from it. I'm still waiting for that to happen. I'm telling you, there's no, there's no sense of it, and it's a waste of time. And for that jerk to keep still using my freaking name, who are you? is a perfect word, lyrical song to him from me. And um, if anybody wants to check that song out, but there's a, there's a part in it that says, you're just like my brother. Um, how does it go? Uh, you're just like my brother. Giving off your trust. And when you've done, uh, and when you have done, say so everybody in, you leave everybody in the dust. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, give your trust. And when you've given it, and people have given you their trust, you leave them in the dust. That's what it pretty much basically says. And he's burnt me in the dust numerous times. You know, there was some times in my life that I was down and out, and he wasn't even there to even give me a hand. But when I was a kid, I mean, it was like, it was like, hey, what's up? Now it's like, I want to bash your face in. And, of course, going on and on, though, about this, (laughs) it just seems insane to have read this. I mean, the Atari, the basis goes on to say we didn't want to be evil at all else. Appeared to be more crazy than evil. When Randy first told me he joined Ozzy, I was like, really, Ozzy? We hated that shit. But Randy said this was different. Uh, this was different. He got to write the music and work with these other guys, well-respected artists. So here's Randy going in and playing his riffs, his music, his melody. And when I asked if uh, Randy appreciated the position of being an Aussie band, Garney said Randy was given free reign in Aussie and was really appreciated of Aussie giving him the opportunity. Randy felt pretty lucky to be playing and writing with, with band. And writing with band. I know he was p- particularly close with Bob Daisley. Also, Bob deserves a lot of credit for helping Randy getting out of his shell that Randy was put in the Quiet Riot days by the people who managed us, of course. You know how that goes. Uh, sometimes the management of the band, say like Easy e puts a lot of pressure on the band and takes more talkative power and bashes the band and giving them the opportunity to do what they should be doing with the talent they were shown to these people and they took it in, but yet they control it. The worst thing that could ever be done is a band being controlled when their talent was seen by these people and right. And here's Randy coming in a band like Ozzy and Ozzy himself needed a damn picker-upper but it's insane. Here he is talking about, oh, that's an evil band. They're, un- they're not talented. But, you know, you cannot bash Black Sabbath. 
Because they took the, like I said, Tony Iommi was a welder. He wanted to pick up that anvil of metal and throw it in the crowd and drop it on the heads of the people that said, you ain't gonna make it in life, boy. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, that that's just crazy. <laughs> Friggin' Randy Rose thought Black Sabbath was evil. But you go and listen to a lot of these songs, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of these songs, man, with lyrics in it that will make you change your mind. They don't worship evil. They tell you things of evil. What this world is made of. And that's all it is. That's what Black Sabbath was. Just because they wanted to scare the shit out of people, they also wanted to prove to people that you shouldn't be scared of shit of us. You should be scared of shit of the world, of what we live in. And back then, hey, they didn't really know where they were going to go with it. But hey, nowadays, and especially Never Say Die album, you want a song that um really hits home, you want to listen to Hard Road. And that's another song that I feel has been, you know, not written for me, but written to where I lived it. Just like these guys. They lived the hard road before they became pioneer fucking icons of metal. To me, they are the creators of metal. Heavy metal. There is a difference between heavy metal, speed metal, hard rock, heavy rock. It's all different, all categorized. And I've been labeling a lot of it myself, so I got to get back on my tape collection and start doing some stuff about this. But I'll tell you, man, these, these guys, even Randy Rhodes, man, was a huge influence to me and when these guys pass man it's gonna be tough real tough I mean Randy Rhodes let alone you know people like Dimebag and Vinnie Paul sometimes I wonder what the hell is God really thinking taking taking away he must not want the bands to tell the true um, stories of the world and put it in good music and make you feel good. No, nope, just come with me. You're dead. Only the good die young, they say. And that's just total sucky inhabited bullshit. I can we can put it in any better words. Sucks. But I, I've been waiting to get this out. I had to do this one, but I've fucking been, you know, holding it off, holding it off, but <laughs> Randy Rhodes and evil. But if anybody's curious, you go listen to some real lyrics in the music that is made by the mighty Black Sabbath, and you will see that then, and if you are someone that thinks they're the devil-worshipping band that they pronounce themselves as, you're wrong, you got it dead wrong. You get out there, you read some there, even if you just read them. You don't have to listen to the music, read them. You'll understand that they're trying to teach the world what we live in, this mess, this hell that we live in. And pretty much a good percentage of it is from our government. Yeah, that's right. Go to our next video. Be safe, take care, beware, and listen to Black Sabbath. Because if you don't, you're a fool. If you don't read the lyrics, you're still a fool. Get out there, check it out. Until then, oh man, I gotta get my mind together. Oh, oh I'm losing it.